Good morning. Uh, good morning. It's it's June first. Welcome. It's Tuesday with uh, Heidi Collette on First Local in the mornings. It is J Tuesday, June the first, which is. means today is Say Something Nice Day. You look beautiful today, Heidi. Oh, and you're always gorgeous, honey. Thank you. Um, World Reef Awareness Day. Reef or reefer? Uh, we'll go with that. World uh, Go Barefoot Day. That's our thing. We Almost don't like barefoot. socks. Yeah. I got the sandals. Oh, oh, oh. God. Yeah, can't do that right now. And uh, Olive Day, Nail Polish Day. Absolutely. And Hazelnut Cake Day. Oh, okay. And Pen Pal Day. Okay. Wow. Pen Pal, Get wow. A, June 1st is a I little mean, like, exciting. Isn't everything shades of Pen Pal right now? Mm. You can't see anybody, so you do a lot of messaging and a lot of texting. <coughs> That's pen pal esque, right? It's what passes for pen pals in 2021. I believe so. You want to hear a fun fact? Factoid. I do. Factoid. Woo, woo. In grade school, I had a pen pal whose name was Rita. And we became such close friends in high school and didn't realize we were pen pals in grade school that, uh, yeah, my friend Rita Rosati, but we were pen pals. And then she came across a letter in high school and be like, oh my God, we were pen pals. Okay. Factoid. Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. <laughs> now that you know all that, there was a game last night. We're not talking about it. Mm. I bet you mm. Tony's going to talk about it, though. <laughs> like, I will talk about it. It is a little too soon. Please hold your memes and gifts and be be kind. Be kind. Be kind today. Right? Sure. Uh, anyways, should we go over to Craig and find out what's going on with the weather today? <coughs> oh, Sorry, quite it's my weird. leaf impersonation. <coughs> yes, they choked. Get it out there. Get it out. Is everybody... <laughs> okay, well, let, moving right along, we are going to talk about uh, last night there was a heavy police presence in Jamestown. At approximately 9.30 p.m., they were made aware of, sorry, Sue and I was made aware of a heavy police presence in the city. Upon arrival, <coughs> police could be seen surrounding a home at the 600 block of Albert Street West. They did have that road blocked off at Albert and James. Okay, Approximately yeah. like eight to nine cruisers. Crazy, that's what a lot. Could be seen with multiple officers having their service rifles pointed at the home. That's nice. scary for the, even the neighbors in there, eh? Yeah. Crowds gathered further down Albert to watch the action. Police could be heard, <coughs> excuse me, calling for an individual to come out of the home. However, at this time, the, the, that the ballistics was not on the scene. Okay. Uh, so, as we received this morning as an update in breaking news. After responding to reports of a firearm at a residence, officers quickly contained the area. <coughs> Around 11 o'clock last night, officers were able to safely evacuate the residence and no firearm was located. Oh. The investigation is complete oh. and officers are no longer on scene. So that's the update we received this morning from police services. <coughs> and I'm choking, just like the police did last night. Anyway, is Craig ready for the weather right now? Because I feel like I just don't want to talk about the leaves right now. I don't hear anything. Neither do I. Okay, we'll continue booth. on. Why don't you continue on and then uh, hopefully someone decides to talk back to us. Well, I oh. am. Oh, Craig oh. is ready. Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that. Him. Okay, over to Craig for the weather. Yeah. Okay, or not. Yes, yes. Well, June well, is thanks, starting off Craig. on a high note, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I was just going to say, awesome, Craig. Uh, you know, I, I think I know what you would say if yeah. you could have said it's a beautiful My day. It feels beautiful already. <laughs> I'm stuck on it's TV right now. It's going to continue be. <laughs> to be beautiful. Uh, not as beautiful as Colette, I don't, <laughs> who draws the camera like a magnet. Look at that. We're like, going to throw to a commercial break and be right back <laughs> after this break, okay? <laughs> we'll go to a commercial and figure out what is going on in the control room with these men we got there going we go. on here. Okay. Can we go to a commercial, guys? Thank you. On TV News, supported by Gary Cherbinski, Exit Realty, Lake Superior. Buying a home is a big decision, so is choosing the right agent. Call Gary Cherbinski, broker at Exit Realty, Lake Superior, 705-257-5432. On TV News, supported by YDoc Detailing. Call YDoc Detailing at 249-356-6688 to book an appointment for detailing or paint correction services today. Hmm. Don't click it, Mike. It's a scam. Oh, hi, Voice of Reason. It looks legit. Don't click. Listen to your voice of reason before you act. I deleted it. Canada.ca slash smart can help. Loss is something that never leaves you. 
Donate $45 today to help victims of impaired driving. A message from Mad Canada. Don't click it, Mike. It's a scam. Oh, hi, Voice of Reason. It looks legit. Don't click. Listen to your Voice of Reason before you act. I deleted it. Canada.ca slash smart can help. Every time you wear a mask, remember, it's so one day we can all go back to doing this and this. Every time you wash your hands, remember that eventually it'll all be worth it for them and them. Every time you hang out here, remember that at some point we'll all be able to get together here, here and here. Protect yourself and others from COVID-19. A message from the Government of Canada. I'm not sure when I will feel like myself again, and that's hard for me to admit. I got COVID. So many others died, and yet I'm lucky. I'm still here. But so are my long haul symptoms. And even the best doctors and scientists don't know what to expect moving forward. But what they do know is that we now have a vaccine against this devastating virus. It is safe and effective. It can keep you from getting critically ill. I wish this vaccine had been around before so many of us had gotten sick. But it is here now for you. This shot means that you can be there again with family, friends, and neighbors. Be there. This is your shot. Good morning and welcome back to First Local Morning. Sorry for the technical challenges, you know. Despite our best efforts, these things can happen. I will let everybody know that Mercury is currently retrograde and Mercury is the planet that governs and rules things like communication but also has direct effects, as we have witnessed, on technology. So a lot of things that shouldn't happen during Met Mercury retrograde include things like signing contracts, unless mm -hmm. you're signing a contract with an existing uh, employer, like somebody with whom you have an established relationship. You should never buy a new electronic device. You should never buy a new car. If you do that during Mercury retrograde, you will find that they become problematic. They will oh. make you unhappy. Great. So. Okay. Um, yeah, so a little factoid there just from, you know, the, you know, the, the, nice. the transom of my mind, which, you know, is terrifying for most people. It's well, Houston, we just had a problem. That yeah. Was so yeah. we've got COVID numbers to talk we about and we have COVID good numbers. news about that. So why don't we hit And you know COVID. what? I'm going to demand a celebration because, hey, day number two, no new cases reported awesome. um, locally. So, you know, I'm sure there'll be a few that I'll have to talk about. Um, I don't know. I'm not uh, playing with my lower back here. I'm trying. There we go. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 So um, I will compare the numbers directly to what was reported as of one o'clock yesterday afternoon. Okay. So uh, locally, we have administered 144,879 tests. So it's only up marginally from yesterday. It's up about 700 tests from yesterday. Our number of confirmed cases remains static at 392. And like I said, I really feel like we should have canned applause or something. We should be confetti, you know, like there should be something like whoop, whoop. I mean, it's not hump Someone day. Someone just coming going, but it's whoop, not whoop. hump day, but hey, this Tomorrow is, you know, I feel like we're getting over a hump here. So mm -hmm. number of active cases have actually dropped by six. Good. So we are down to 12 active cases. 
Four people in hospital, awesome. no Algoma residents are in hospital. Yesterday we still had two. The two have been discharged, it would seem. And we are looking at four non-Algoma residents, which is up from yesterday by one. Um, so 380 cases have been resolved. We now have 100 cases that have screened positive, positive for the variants of concern. So, that's yeah, good. I think that, you know, that's kind of exciting. I'm, I'm excited. I think that's good news. So, you can't applause it is. Um, that is good news. You're right. And yesterday we were under 1,000 in the whole province. So, let's hope for today having a more under 1,000 because the Chief Medical Officer of Health will open up everything, um, uh, expedite the opening, reopening, if we continue to stay at under 1,000. So we'll look for that at 10 a.m. We are now ready to go to our Father Nature, who is going to give us glorious news. <laughs> this weekend is beach weather, by the way, and you promised me that, Craig. Is that still the case? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a hot one. Uh, actually, very sorry for the Toronto Maple Leaf fans, but hey, maybe this forecast will uh, make you feel a little better because we have just sunny skies today and uh, some very warm temperatures building today and into this week. We'll take a look outside, Mike, are we going outside? There we go. Beautiful morning shot of the St. Mary's River and the marina and uh, no fog whatsoever here in town. There is a little bit of fog out to the west near the airport and area like that, but that fog will lift uh, momentarily and leave us with a beautiful day. We'll take a look at the radar, show you, oh, sorry, we're going to the 12 hour forecast. Uh, this is what your day is looking like, it's mainly sunny skies basically for your morning. We're going to see a little bit of cloud uh, build in for the afternoon, but temperature is very warm at uh, 22, 23 degrees. And our evenings looking pretty nice too, just sunny skies and very warm temperatures, some very light winds, so we don't have anything to worry about there. It's going to be a beautiful day. I will touch on your three day forecast coming up. You're going to like it. Well, thank you very much, Craigers. I, uh, I, <laughs> we were a little confused going, why is there a sun at nighttime? But that's 12 hours. That's, uh, it's only 8 a.m. Um, okay, posing questions about the mayor's leadership scholarship criteria. Yes. This has been posted to SueOnline.com by the one, the only, Josie Fegan. Yeah. The mayor's youth advisory council is offering two $1,000 leadership <laughs> scholarships for students entering post-secondary <laughs> education. Students that reside in Sault Ste. Marie are eligible to submit yes. an application until June the 30th. Winners will be announced shortly after after on July 7th. Oops, never mind. Okay. okay, one of the two scholarships given will be to someone who identifies as a marginalized person, and the second will be available for applicants who do not wish to be considered as <clears throat> part of the marginalized person application pool. All your deets are posted. That's how the cool kids see, say details. All the deets are posted to sueonline.com, and it's called Posing Questions About the Mayor's Leadership Scholarship Criteria. Go read it today. Well, do you know what's interesting about that, Can I? Because I read it yesterday, and it, it is, uh, they're asking, the application process is different, is the problem. Yeah, there's so many different parts of it, I just well, didn't no, want to like break. the most notable difference, so and this is the question that Josie asked, because um, she and I actually, you, you had gone, because Colette comes in early, no, no. Um, well, anyway, it's just, yeah, like there is a discrepancy in the application process, so I don't know, yeah. Okay. All right. Over to you. Well, East Algoma was busy. They've laid yes, some they charges. Were. They've laid many charges. So, May 16th, shortly after 10.30 p.m., members from the East Algoma detachment of the OPP responded to theft of a mobile phone on East Cul-de-Sac in the city of Elliott Lake. Investigation determined an accused reached through the vehicle window and grabbed the phone from the rear passenger and ran into a residence. The complainant attended the residence to retrieve the phone and was met by another individual who threatened to harm the complainant and was told to get off the property. So as a result of the investigation, Tamara Mersnick, Mersnick, 26 years of age from Elliott Lake, was arrested on May 24th and charged with robbery with theft contrary to Section 334 of the Criminal Code. Robert Copens, 49 years of age from Elliott Lake, was arrested on May 24th and charged with robbery with theft, contrary to Section 334. And both accused are scheduled to appear before the Ontario Court of Justice in Elliott Lake on July 6th. 
Okay, so now over to Spanish. On May 27th, shortly after 5.30 a.m., members from the East Algoma Detachment of the OPP responded to a domestic dispute related call. So the victim reported being threatened <coughs> and proceeded to leave camp on foot, later flagged down a passerby on Highway 17 in the town of Spanish. Investigation determined the camp on Beckerton Shooting Range Road, where the couple were staying, had been set on fire after the victim had left. Uh, so police located the vehicle of the accused at the intersection of Front Street, which is Highway 17 and Trunk Road, where it failed to negotiate a right turn. As a result of the investigation, a 32-year-old from Spanish Wow, was arrested and charged with a number of items. So this is posted to the website, so I'm not gonna go through all of those, um, but yes, a very hefty slew of charges. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you know what, we'll break these up, because there's like a lot here. I know. <laughs> We're going to throw to a commercial shortly, but just yesterday the crews attended a second West End fire. Another one fire. around 4.30 p.m. yesterday afternoon, Sioux Fire Services did respond to the second fire of the day. And actually, I was sitting at home and I, I, Dante and I were busy doing social science work and we heard the sirens, so I knew that this was going in. Calls came in from what Sioux Online had learned was a deck fire in the back of a property on Henrietta, which again is on the west end, off of Farwell. Farwell Terrace is getting it yeah, badly this week. Sue Online last week. Sue Online spoke with the local individual who put the uh, who attended who put attended who attended the fire. He is credited with putting the majority of the fire out with a garden hose before the firefighters arrived. So congratulations there wow. for quick thinking. Firefighters did run a hose and put out the remainder of the blaze. There were no injuries reported and no cause had been determined as of yet, but we will get that shortly. The fire services really do get back to us very quickly. And yeah. yesterday they had uh, already did the investigation on that fire and it was because of heat was too close to combustibles. So we're gonna go to commercial shortly. You want to go back to the uh, OPP? Oh God, really? You know, yeah, how you many, know me. How much Are you down with OPP? <laughs> how much time do I have left? Because these go. Okay, <laughs> let's see if I uh, three minutes. Oh yeah, I can hit these two in three there minutes for sure. Okay, here we go. May 29th, shortly after 1:30 p.m., members from the East Algomi Detachment of the OPP responded to a traffic complaint of a westbound vehicle driving erratically on Highway 17 within the township of the North Shore. So, police observed the vehicle at a local gas station in the town of Blind River and the car left the parking lot in a westbound direction onto Cosley, Cosley Street. The vehicle then proceeded to turn into a convenience store parking lot where police interacted with the driver. A query revealed the driver was suspended. After the investigation, ooh, Tyree, Tyree, Gabriel, 41 years of age, that's an interesting name, Tyree. T-Y-R-E-E? -E? Yeah, T-Y-R-E-E, -E. that's exactly it, yeah. yeah. Tyree Gabriel, 41 years of age from Blind River, was charged with operation while prohibited under the criminal code contrary to section 320. Uh, driving while suspended contrary to section 53 of the Highway Traffic Act, two counts on that one. And the accused is scheduled to appear before the Ontario Court of Justice in Blind River on July 8, 2021. Mm -hmm. The vehicle was mm -hmm. impounded for 45 days. 45 days? Well, the vehicle didn't do anything wrong. Why well, is it being put in jail? Well, did not do anything wrong at all. What? What? The vehicle. Okay. They did say they were going to extend all those, uh, those roadside... Uh, suspensions and everything and increase the fines. That oh, was they did, to go eh? up. Yeah, oh, okay. 45 days. Usually it's only a seven days. Yeah, 45 days seems a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Serpent River then, First Nation, May 29th, shortly after 7.45 p.m. This is the last one. It's the last one. <laughs> You're killing us, Heidi. <laughs> Good Lord. Everybody's going back to bed. Saying, Forget just, this bad I news. I just sucked all of the feel good about the <laughs> no new COVID numbers for the second yeah. day in a row. Here I am just sucking it right dry. Okay. Members from oh. East... <laughs> With the okay, so members of the East Detachment of the Ontario Provincial oh, Poli yeah. Police, with the assistance of the Manitoulin Crime Unit, the OPP's Emergency Response Team, and the Mississauga First Nation Police Service, they responded to a family dispute on Village Road in the community of the Serpent First Nation. So after police investigation, it was determined a person threatened was threatened and physically assaulted by a sibling that was allegedly, allegedly. intoxicated by alcohol and non-prescription non drugs. Family members 
feared for their safety and subsequently departed the residence to wait for police. Oh, that's too bad, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, police arrived shortly after to find the accused barricaded in the residence. Police attempted to contact the person numerous times with negative results. After speaking to family members, police learned there were firearms in the home. Uh, so OPP ERT members contained the residents and shortly after 5 a.m. on May 30th, the person was arrested without incident. So as a result of the investigation, Zachary Pelletier, 25 years, from Elliot, 25 years of age from Elliott Lake, was charged with assault with a weapon contrary to Section 267 of the Criminal Code, uttering death threats. And it's scheduled to appear in Blind River on July the 8th. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Well, when we come back, we're going to tell you a story out of Vancouver about some kids who were given the wrong vaccination. So when you're getting your vaccination, folks, make sure you're checking that. We also want to talk about the McMeekin. We've got Ooh. a new rink coming to town. And uh, the Indian Friendship Center is kicking off a new scavenger hunt. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with all these deets. As the coast First Local, supported by James Seaton Mortgage Specialist. Your new home doesn't come with mortgage advice. I do. Call James Seaton Mortgage Specialist, RBC, once in a while at parties and stuff. If that's what your kid says, they'll probably also tell you that it's not a big deal. But that's no reason not to talk about it. You could tell them that you think that's a good thing and that you're really happy they don't use it that often. Then ask them why. Maybe deep down they know it's bad. They just need your help realizing it. From there, it should be pretty easy to drop off the hint that their brain is still growing and that they shouldn't smoke pot. At least not until they're older. Visit DrugFreeKidsCanada.org for more tools to help start the conversation. Is going to a party really worth it? Putting yourself at risk puts everyone at risk. Help limit the spread of COVID-19. Well, welcome back. It is Tuesday, June the 1st. Summer will officially be here in what, like 19 days, I think? <laughs> it's the summer of Heidi and Colette, or Kaleidi, <laughs> or what's Hi the one? Hi, Dad. Yes, Hi we're Dad. not too sure which one we're going with. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the McMeekin. Now, I, I know a lot of people say, we've well, got so many rinks in the Sioux, but there are also a lot of teams using the rinks in the Sioux. That's and true. And if anybody has ever went into the McMeekin, Oh my God, you could put the hot things in your hands. It doesn't matter. You're freezing in there. So it was about time that they did revamp the McMeekin yes. and, and um, the core cult, the team that's where they practice out of. So let's give them a better, better arena. And oh boy, did they ever. So yesterday we received an announcement from the Ministry of Infrastructure with regards to a funding announcement. And MPP Ross Romano came forward with a major announcement of funds yesterday towards the replacement of the McMeekin at 4.30 yesterday. End of the day announcement. Wow. Kept us hanging on, Rossi, with approximately $18 million coming from the province of Ontario. Council chose to go with the full replacement of the McMeekin instead of doing a patch job or whatever. They had different ideas what they wanted to do. Okay. Uh, a walking track will be included, which is pretty cool. They Very have one nice. at Sioux College as well. It's really nice. And in the project with only um, one councillor opposed to that, and that was Councillor Christian. Uh, in the end, the total cost to the city is now $14 million for a full replacement, which is pretty much half because... The, the, the province is providing uh, in, yeah uh, yeah with the province of Ontario pitching in they saved the city approximately 10 million dollars million and <laughs> interest an interest over the term of the loan great essentially paying for the full project according to the city um, stay with sue online as we bring you more reaction because we do know that we will receive reaction and some if you got some feedback share with us We've got our social media time coming up. We want to talk about what's going on in your, uh, if you guys want to talk about what's going on in the city and on the agenda. Yeah. Or just how it's going to be the summer of Heidi and Colette. Or, well, you know, Heidi. Heidi. Or Colette. Colette. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, wait, okay. No, I don't no, even no. know what I mean by the summer of Heidi and Colette. Like, what are we going to do? We don't do anything. Well, 
well, it's, we've been in a stay-at-home order. That's we right. can't do We're anything. coming out, baby! <laughs> you know? Speaking of which, that is set to expire tomorrow. So, tomorrow? I thought, I thought it was June supposed 4th. to be. What? What? June 2nd. 14th, I thought we were going to. What? June 2nd, no, I think, got extended. Said no, somebody said June 2nd. No, we're, no. June 2nd for stay-at-home order, maybe, perhaps. Maybe. We'll look into that right after this. <laughs> 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 Breaking news! Do, 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 do. It's not over tomorrow. All right. Um, speaking of upgrades, mm -hmm. Sioux Fire Services. Were we, oh, right. We were talking about it. We were talking. You talked about the McMeekin. Yeah, I know, know, I know, I know. And I know. the punitive cold that is housed within its current it's shape. Awful. It was uh, awful. It is awful. Yes. Yeah. Um, so firefighters locally will have some new equipment. Yeah. Provided council. Um, provided their approval and to be honest mm -hmm. I don't have the update on that but what this is what they were shooting for mm -hmm. um, agenda items that were included 6.2 and 6.3 uh, were set to potentially address some significant needs mm -hmm. having to do with the replacement of a pumper tanker because our current unit the 1600 USG Ford L9000 oh, it's a good operating at this moment <laughs> Station to stop it. You're going to get me in trouble with Dan. He takes this very seriously. <laughs> now, they're looking to replace that. The capacity of the new pumper tanker is currently unknown. Mm. Um, and for Dan to say that, that means it is currently unknown. Is that kind of like unknown? Unknown. <laughs> unknown. Don't know who I was touching. As well, we're not sure what happens to the existent tanker pumper, you know, once it is replaced. So that's hmm. that's a question that Things needs that some answering. Hmm. Uh, so this new tanker is going to cost $842,572.80. And You're kidding me right now. Let cents. me see that number. I knew you would Listen, love that. Listen, round the numbers up, guys, or down. We can go, uh, so come on. It's required as part of maintaining our frontline uh, response fleet of mm -hmm. vehicles. Uh, so yeah, I mean, and then the other purchase has to do with the continuation of a pilot program whereby station wear mm -hmm. for the firefighters um, oh. and their dress uniforms are being purchased from KLE distributors. Oh, no, it's true. Um, and <clears throat> Sault Ste. Marie Fire Services have reviewed the results of the pilot because it has been a pilot project um, and it's, they are extremely satisfied with the quality of the product okay. and service. So each personnel, so each individual on staff is sized for station mm -hmm. wear as well as dress wear, right. which is an arduous process. This is a direct quote, this mm -hmm. is important. Um, it's an arduous process which has now been completed by KLE. So the contract is now going to be extended through December 2022 uh, with a spend of almost $110,000 flat rounded. Excellent work. Okay, over three years. So, yeah. you know, Dan bids you to stay with us here at Sue Online as we continue to bring information in regards to emergency services. Mm -hmm. And just a reminder, this is all coming out of a city council meeting that happened last night. Yeah. Um, so the IFC, which is our Indian Friendship Center. Darla, if you're watching, good morning. Wonderful Yay, Darla. We Darla. love you. We hope you have a wonderful day. Everyone at the Indian Friendship Center. The Sioux St. Marie Indian Friendship Center has created another awesome community scavenger hunt. Their previous scavenger hunt incorporated the seven grandfather teachings and had the whole community out and involved looking for the painted stones along the hub trail that's we're talking so about cool. the painted stones when i tell you the hospital did it last year and so i was cool. i love i love my little stone the stones were maybe painted a little too beautifully as they kept having to replace them though and i did hear this <laughs> is the connor's girlfriend says we went to go look for them and there weren't any there so <laughs> okay they received a lot of positive community feedback which is awesome because you know as we've been saying over and over again, it's nice to do something positive outside during such a pandemic negative time, right? Yes. So Taryn Morley, promoter for Healthy Living with Children, Youth and Families, and Katie Real, Indigenous Family Support Worker for Families with Children for the Sault Ste. Marie IFC, joins you online to talk about their latest scavenger hunt. Um, this is posted to our website. Please go and read this. Uh, the progress of the hunt will be tracked on an app scaver which is uh, participants are asked to take a picture of their family with the words they find and upload them to the app or mail them to Katie. Uh, participants will be entered in a draw for each word they find at Bellevue. So there's so many little components and elements to this little competition and scavenger hunt. So go there, get Katie's email address and go have fun this weekend. It's going to be beautiful out there. Um, okay, we're going back to a commercial again. Yeah, I think that's a really great initiative. Like, I know. You know. To kind of, you know, get 
people engaged with you know yes, with the and get language you outside and too. get and you outside and, and you let your little guys run on and look for it and sure you can have yeah fun. no i think that's fantastic yeah it is okay so like i said we are going to come back and talk about somebody did some mixing and the matching of the uh of our covid19 vaccinations out in vancouver and uh well they're not too happy about it no and i guess i guess we're going to si uh, highlight low light that game Allegedly. last night and that was awful mitch martyr hang your head in shame we'll be right back after this commercial break <laughs> First Local, supported by James Seaton Mortgage Specialist. Your new home doesn't come with mortgage advice. I do. Call James Seaton Mortgage Specialist, RBC, 705-975-1519. First Local, supported by... YDoc Detailing. Call YDoc Detailing at 249-356-6688 to book an appointment for detailing or paint correction services today. Do your part to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Cough into your elbow, not into your hand or in the air. Avoid touching your face, eyes and mouth. Keep your distance from people. Stay at least six feet away from others. If you're feeling sick, please just stay home. Do the five and keep others alive. Help stop the spread of COVID-19. When I found out, I had cancer. It was the hardest day of my life. But life is bigger than cancer. Well, you are back on this Tuesday, June 1st with Heidi and Colette at First Local in the Morning. Thank you to all our sponsors and everybody who's, um, yeah. who's had those little short commercials yeah. and, and little, just awesome little commercials and getting your message across because we support local and we're here for you. Uh, contact Nicole if you want to get one of those, by the way, because they're pretty cool. A lot of people are watching, so hopefully yeah. you're watching to see it. Um, well, it is National Say Something Nice Day, so I'm going to take the time to say something nice to our producer, Mike. Thank you, Michael, for being just a wonderful producer and supporter of First Local and Heidi and Colette. Over to you, Heidi. All right. Well, let's uh, let's do a factoid, um, and then maybe we'll we'll see what's happening in the world of social media. Okay. Okay. No Montreal Canadiens talk. What did you say about Craig? Oh, right, Craig. We got to go to Craig at, uh, eventually. But do your factoid. Okay. We'll throw it to Craig okay. and do some social media. Okay. Okay, June 1st, 1975. Wasn't born. Well, I was, but that's, <laughs> that's another story for another day. President Ford trips. U.S. President Gerald Ford falls down the steps of Air Force One after arriving uh -huh. in Austria. <clears throat> Chevy Chase's parody of this on <laughs> Saturday Night Live, along with another fall while climbing up the stairs of on... Air Force One the following December and other clutch what? moments would lead the media to characterize Ford as a klutz. Ford, however, mm -hmm. was a star college football player <laughs> for the University <laughs> of Michigan. <laughs> There you have it. Well, you don't know how well he was he did. So, you know. He fell up and down the stairs? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep. He's not even wearing heels. <laughs> Speaking of uh, saying things nice to our co-workers, Craig Huckerby, we think you're a wonderful person, Father Nature. We're so happy to work with you. What do you have for us today? Thank you very much. Well, here we are, June 1st already, and we're heading in for some summer-like weather this week. We'll take a look at radar. Today's going to be a beautiful day. Just sunny skies, blue skies. We don't have any precipitation to worry about today or even a lot of cloud actually. As you can see, we're basically clear right around the uh, northern Great Lakes anyway as that system kind of scoots off towards the east. We have nothing really pending out to the west so enjoy the next couple of days. It's going to be beautiful. We'll take a look at the temperatures for today. 23 pretty much for the Sioux and area 24 in Sudbury and 25 in Timmins, 17 a little of a cool spot in Wawa this, uh, for our day today. Let's take a look at the systems map for today and as I say we have high pressure 
pretty much stationary. It's going to sit there for the next couple of days anyway, keeping this at bay. We do have a, a chance of some of this sneaking in late uh, week, say in Thursday, Friday, giving us just a slight chance of maybe seeing some rain. But other than that, we are just sticking with some sun and cloud for the most part and warming temperatures for the next several days. For today, 23, we're going to burn off that fog very quickly this morning. For Wednesday, 25 degrees with a mix of sun and cloud, and we just increased the temperatures for Thursday at 27 with a mix of sun and cloud, and those temperatures continue to climb for the next six days after that. So it's definitely going to be a steamer going into the weekend and for next week. That's your weather right now. Let's send it back to Heidi and Clut. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Social media, baby. Social media. All right, here we go. Ooh, hang on, let me stretch just in case there's some Montreal hats fans out there. I got to get All my right. thick skin on. It's on. <laughs> Margaret McKay beats everybody to the punch, and there are no anti-Toronto sentiments from Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. She, bill, she just bids us good morning all. So good morning to you, Margaret. It's always nice. The day starts off well with a greeting from you. Debbie yeah. Doucette, have a beautiful day all. Well, you too, Debbie. Debbie. And she sends us a whack of emojis. We've got the coffee, the sunshine, another coffee. We've got 100%. Two hearts, a rainbow. I always, <laughs> they're always after me, lucky charms. They're always after <laughs> lucky charms. <laughs> and two little cones of celebration. So that could be. Well, you wanted the celebrations because of the COVID numbers. So there you go. Thank well, you, that's worth celebrating, I think, two days in oh, a no, row. It is. I mean, yeah, 100%. You know, so locally we can celebrate just the same way the province has been celebrating with the numbers <laughs> in gradual decline. And I hope I haven't jinxed us. But anyway, that's okay. Day number I'm a Leaf two. fan. I'm jinxed every day. Aww. New it's name, Trev Fisher. Do you know that name? Who? Trev. No, Trev I don't. Fisher. Hello, Trev. Welcome aboard. Good We're morning, happy Trev. Happy to have you with us. Buckle up, um, Trev. So he Welcome says, to good the morning. show. <laughs> good morning to you too. Costa Rica checks yo, in. Yo, 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 Mike. Mike Adams. Good morning to you. Joe Tarbox says hello, and I will <laughs> anticipate your response and relay it back to him. Um, he sends us two palm trees. We've got a Costa Rican cup of coffee, yes. two sunshines, and a bird of paradise. Good morning, oh, ladies. Nice. Well, good morning to good you. Morning. I hope that our guest rooms are ready. Hello, ladies. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Enica says, good morning, everyone. Today, our son Mark celebrates his 34th birthday. Ah. So she's got the little celebration emoji with the corn, like mm -hmm. the cone of it's confetti so and the little streamers. Happy 34th birthday to you, Mark, oh, from us nice. all the way here in Sault yeah. Ste. Marie to you there. We do Is have he an, with you in the Netherlands? I, you let us know, Inika. That's a fair question. We do have a, we do have a retirement that we're going to share too after all this. So that's we'll, right. We'll yes. A special announcement. Um, Steve Child says to Enoch, I hope he has a great birthday with many more to come. And Mark oh, nice. Beecham or Beauchamp, depending on how you pronounce. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday from one Mark to another. Two oh, cakes, nice. two cones of celebration, and like a little firecracker scintillation, an explosion of happiness. Steve Child, GMA. Good morning, all. H-E-H-A-G-D. Okay, so good morning, all. Hope everyone has a good day. Maybe great Cheers. day. Great day. Okay, <coughs> yes. Great. Glee? Kimberly, Kim loves the summertime. So Me too, Kim. not only because her birthday is in the summer, <coughs> but because she loves to be outdoors. So good morning, all. Happy June first. My favorite emoji, the little winky smile. We've got the sunshine, a bouquet of flowers, a hibiscus, the confetti <coughs> cone. We have a sunflower of sorts, maybe a gerbera. Ooh, a cup of coffee and a dog. Mark Beecham says good morning. Some emojis there. Uh, Cody Pauli Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. That's a new name. Yes, I'd know that name if I'd seen it before. Absolutely. So welcome aboard. Welcome. Thank you for Good watching. Morning. Good morning. He says, "Can't believe it's already June." I know. I also cannot believe I'm it. It's so fantastic. About that. I'm not a. I'm not a. I'm a summer person. I'm well, yeah. All the way. Well, I think really. <laughs> by the time we get done winter, we're all summer people. No, I like that humidity, that mugginess, where you feel like you're stepping into a bowl of soup and you <laughs> can't I, breathe. Oh, I love that weather. Oh. I do. I'm like, it's been winter for 10 months. Mm. So anyway, okay. okay. Welcome aboard, Cody. Thank you for watching. Carl from Fergus, Fergus. Good says, morning, good Carl. morning. Good morning, Carl. Steve Child says, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I think that's about the COVID whoop, numbers. Whoop. 
Steve and I are kind of like, we've got this like, you know, this simpatico thing. So I'm not quite like us. We're different, but Steve and I, you know, for never was, having actually looked into some, each other's like, eyes. I had the green eyed monster about to pop out of me there. Like, no, what? I'm no need. No need. <laughs> Tony Mancuso, what a great morning, morning it is today. Be nice. With the sun coming up between huge threats nice, of Tony. land. Be nice, Tony. <laughs> Two cups of coffee and four OKs. Not so much if you're a leaf. There fan. it is. Like Boom. the fat lady finally played her last note. Mm, okay. I have no response to that. Well. I, I, I will say that at 705 Sports, which airs on Fridays at 4 p.m. with our sports analyst, Jacob Moore, and well, me. We'll come back to social media. That we will, we will be analyzing the game. But we are going to come right back after this commercial break, a little more social media. We're talking about the vaccination. And Canada is going to recommend to do the little mixy-matchy of AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and Moderna. Stay tuned. Oh. We'll be right back. 705 Sports, supported by Gary Cherbinski, Exit Realty, Lake Superior. Buying a home is a big decision, so is choosing the right agent. Call Gary Cherbinski, broker at Exit Realty, Lake Superior, 705-257-5432. On TV News, supported by Gary Cherbinski, Exit Realty, Lake Superior. Buying a home is a big decision, so is choosing the right agent. Call Gary Cherbinski, broker at Exit Realty, Lake Superior, 705-257-5432. I'm not sure when I will feel like myself again, and that's hard for me to admit. I got COVID. So many others died, and yet I'm lucky. I'm still here. But so are my long-haul symptoms. And even the best doctors and scientists don't know what to expect moving forward. But what they do know is that we now have a vaccine against this devastating virus. It is safe and effective. It can keep you from getting critically ill. I wish this vaccine had been around before so many of us had gotten sick. But it is here, now, for you. This shot means that you can be there again with family, friends, and neighbors. Be there. This is your shot. Good morning. Welcome back. It's June 1st with Heidi and Colette. Mike has a special retirement announcement that we are going to share. If you want to share those pictures, yes. Mike. Up a, yes. After 42 years, I believe, at the steel plant, um, we have a retiree here in Sault Ste. Marie. So we are sending congratulations. Mike, what's a... John Agnew. So from everybody here, especially Mike Chikoski, our wonderful producer, we wish you all the best for your retirement after 42 years at the plant. Congratulations. That's amazing. And enjoy that cake. And what, I bet you woke up this morning and thought, now what? <laughs> I really, you know what, can I just say, yeah. I really love those kind of like, you know, when they do like the big cards. I've also seen where they'll frame a picture and then everybody signs the matting around yeah, the picture. Yeah, that's nice. I yeah. really like that. I think that's uh, a really nice, nice kind of... Seat commemoration of a special event yeah. um, with all of the people that were involved with you at that moment in time, right? Because people yeah, come and absolutely. go. Meh. 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 You know what's meh is that border's not open still. We want, I need to go to TJ Maxx. This is not about safety anymore. I need to go to TJ Maxx. <laughs> I've never been. What? No, I've never been. I think we need to take a commercial break right now. I need to compose myself <laughs> and gather. I maxed out at discovering the splendor that was a true superstore in Walmart, what? U.S. Like the, I'm the alley of wine. Oh, I was like, oh. If I could swear right now, I probably would. Okay. How's, <laughs> well, anyway, moving along from Heidi not being able to. Uh, House, di we are going to have so much fun when that opens up. House dismisses <laughs> reports that U.S. wants the border with Canada reopen next month. Um, we're on the right path, they say, but we'll make our decisions based on the interests of Canadians, not based on the interests of what the Americans want. Well, what about Colette? Colette wants to go to DJ Max and take Heidi with her. Um, so Trudeau suggested that 75% of Canadians need to be vaccinated and daily cases need to continue to decline. Like we we're saying, the province is under 1,000 uh, here in Ontario. We need to see those numbers going down throughout other provinces and territories. We all want things to reopen. I think everybody knows that by now. Yeah. And we want to go back to traveling, to seeing friends, to going to TJ Maxx. Your to family. To, I would love to go see my parents. Thank you. I'm a brother. Um, the land border has been closed to non-essential travel since March of 2020. Correct. And the measure was recently extended until 
June the 21st. That's right. Trudeau's mm -hmm. words came as Ontario and Quebec reported their lowest numbers of new COVID-19 infections in months. February, to be exact. And uh, Quebec reported fewer than 300 new COVID-19 cases for the first time since mid-September. Okay. They only reported 276 in the province there of okay. Quebec. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, Quebec. Nunavut's chief public health officer said Monday that the territory will ease restrictions later this week thanks to falling cases and high vaccine uptakes. So continue to get vaccinated and um, things will open up. And then we'll talk a little bit about when you do go for your vaccination, make sure you're getting the right one. Over right. to you for your story update, and then I'll go back to that one. It's a well, juicy one. It's a juicy one. You know what? I'm going to skip ahead to a little bit of entertainment just to kind of break it up a bit. Um, sure. So, an actor in Toronto has passed away at the age of 90. Okay, his name is Paul Souls. Um, you will know him very likely if you watch the 1960s animated series Spider-Man. Um, he also provided Aww. the voice for Hermie, the elf, in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So Paul Souls, a uh, Toronto actor, has passed away. It is said that he died of natural causes last Wednesday at home in Toronto. Um, Souls was the first actor to play the teenage Peter Parker and his arachnid-powered alter ego on screen in Spider-Man. So um, he did say in 2018, he did an interview with the Canadian press, he said that initially he was at a loss as to how to portray the role, partly because he didn't feel like a superhero growing Aww. up. But it turned out that Lee wanted Spidey to have more human characteristics than the other heroes of the era. So Soul said he identified with the teen character's feelings of being an outsider amongst his peers. Because I mean, certainly like in the films that have come out, that's how he's portrayed, yeah. right? Like, you yeah. know, before he becomes, you know, activated. So uh, he... So Soul says, you know, I was like the proverbial 19-pound weakling who gets the sand kicked in his face. I never considered myself a superhero mm -hmm. or how that would sound, but as it turned out over the years, this is what Lee apparently intended. So just a little bit of information about somebody that we don't know, but we do know because we've heard his voice one way or the other. So. Oh, okay, well, thank yeah. you very much. Okay, let's move over to this this crazy story about vaccination errors that yeah. happened in Vancouver. The unfortunate part was it's uh, to do with use. So Vancouver Coastal Health is apologizing and saying it's updating its immunization process after they did distribute the wrong immunization uh, to some uh, use, which were given the wrong vaccine. The health authority says the error happened Friday and Saturday during the first full week that kids who are aged 12 to 17 could be vaccinated. It says in a statement that 12 youths received the Moderna dose as opposed to the Pfizer dose. Oh. Uh, it says that Moderna recently announced that clinical trials for adolescents found its uh, vaccine to be safe and effective because, um, as you know, the age groups haven't had clearance from all vaccination types. Okay. Uh, like, you know, Pfizer has cleared the way. Right. Um, Moderna's saying, yeah, it's, it's fine. But also, if you're 12 and under, that still hasn't even been fixed out. So um, the statement says Vancouver Coastal Health Medical Officers do not believe, do not believe the use of Moderna will impact the 12 use who received the shot. It says that people who administered the shots recognized their error and did disclose it to the clients. Ooh, that's a conversation. I don't know if I want to be a fly on the wall or I don't want to be a fly on the wall for. Mm. And their families and additional education and process are now in place. Well, that may be so, but you just use 12 youths as guinea pigs. So I don't know if I'd be too happy with it. <sighs> as that mother? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, because my eldest is 12. So, you know, where she and I are having discussions on the about cusp. getting, you yeah. know, because, you know, certainly she is eligible. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I have to be honest. I, I think I'd freak out. If I receive that oh, phone freak call, out. I, think I I'd mean, freak out. As a mom, the mama bear, that exists. That's not a myth. Well, once it's in you, it's in you. Right? I would not At take well to this. AstraZeneca. Expiry, no expiry. Oh, it's okay. We passed the deadline, but we're just going to extend that <laughs> deadline. That's okay. Just wipe the mold off. We're good. We're good. <laughs> right? We didn't mean May 31st. We meant June 30th. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go to commercial in about 30 seconds. You have a quick story, or a minute, actually. I apologize. You've got a quick story before we do that, or shall we well, uh, continue the banter back and forth right now? <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Here's a good story. Okay. So there was a missing dog who was found oh, to have traveled story. 70 kilometers across Nunavut tundra to reunite with his family. Okay. 
So in late April, Donna Adams and her family decided to snowmobile to Whale Cove, Nunavut for the funeral of her young great niece. Bad weather forced them not to take a plane before they'd left. Their dog, Pepper, a 10 year old German Shepherd began acting up. She was oh. very concerned. She didn't like to leave us alone. Um, and this is what the lady said, describing how she kept the dog kept following the sled out into the ice and eventually Adams coaxed her to return home. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the next day they flew to the funeral while the son stayed home, went off work. Several days after the funeral, Adams' husband returned back home to Rankin Inlet only to find no signs of Pepper. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously very upset. Um, mm -hmm. But eventually the dog came home. How many kilometers? 70 kilometers? 70 kilometers across none of it tundra and they didn't even mind that she was muddy and icy that is so adorable well we're gonna show a video when we come back of this commercial break with regards to your taxes and uh what happened with our taxes through COVID 19 and that is with peggy from aberdeen tax inc so we'll be right hey, back yay. with that video to share yes 705 sports supported by why doc detailing call why doc detailing at 249-356-6688 to book an appointment for detailing or paint correction services today first local supported by gary Cherbinsky, exit realty lake superior buying a home is a big decision so is choosing the right agent call gary Cherbinsky, broker at exit realty lake superior 705-257-5432 Once in a while, at parties and stuff. If that's what your kid says, they'll probably also tell you that it's not a big deal. But that's no reason not to talk about it. You could tell them that you think that's a good thing and that you're really happy they don't use it that often. Then ask them why. Maybe deep down they know it's bad. They just need your help realizing it. From there, it should be pretty easy to drop off the hint that their brain is still growing and that they shouldn't smoke pot. At least not until they're older. Visit DrugFreeKidsCanada.org for more tools to help start the conversation. Two shot, Good morning, welcome back. Uh, here we are with our favorite two shot. Hello, uh, two. peace you know, out two. That's right. First local morning, Colette and Heidi, you get to see us both at the same time, which wow. is what makes us powerful. Well, anyway, well, speaking well. of power, how about the power to control <laughs> the weather? <laughs> Go over to Craig. Thanks again, girls. Uh, in for a beautiful day today. Just to recap your weather for today, we'll take a look at the radar for you and show you what the sky looks like it's common mike says there we go uh, you can see it kind of almost like a circle right around the great lakes that's high pressure keeping all that cloud and precipitation at bay we're just looking at sunny skies today we may see a little clouds build in just from daytime heating later on this afternoon but temperatures very toasty at 24 and we're going to continue to climb those temperatures throughout the week we'll take a look at the 12 hour forecast for you. Temperatures right now at 11 degrees, by the way, heading towards 23 this afternoon. Uh, we could see some cloudy periods and some uh, just clear conditions for your evening. Temperatures very warm for your evening. And as I say, the seven day forecast, we have six days in the seven day forecast that are 29 degrees or higher. So uh, that's something to look forward to. And I'll touch on that at five o'clock right now. Let's send it back to Heidi and Clyde. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate your, uh, your ability to tell the weather so well. It's National Say Something Nice Day. And there you I, go. I just, and although, I, if, did Craig post that video about us this morning? Because I that, could be um, taking all these positive comments back. Anyway, yeah. um, we have some more social media stuff. But before we get to that, I just want to introduce Peggy. And Peggy uh, is the owner, operator out of the Aberdeen Tax Inc. She was an awesome interview. I'm going to let her do the talking. Mike, if you please, our wonderful producer. Make sure that people knew that. Um, I, I know once you miss a deadline, it's very discouraging. And It's really hard to circle back to those 
kinds of things. I, I want to encourage people, don't beat yourself up. This has been a really hard year for people. Trying to get your taxes done in a lockdown is not easy. But there's a lot of advantages to getting them filed, even though they might be late. It, you may have refunds, obviously. There's benefits that will be held up. But also, um, what's happening this year is if you received any of the COVID relief benefits personally, so the CERB or the CRB that replaced it or EI during the year, then there is an interest-free grace period this year. So if you do owe tax because of things like CERB, which was like in- incredibly difficult to try to budget for in the middle of a pandemic, yeah. just um, rest assured that at least the interest is not um, accumulating. You have until April 2022 to pay that. Oh, okay. That's good yeah. to know. That's really yeah. good to know. So they, they, I know that they extended the deadline to file last season. Did they extend it for this season as well? They did not. But they did, eh? Okay. <laughs> I was right. surprised that they didn't, yeah. considering we're actually in a, you know, more of a tough situation now than we were a year ago, I would say. Absolutely. But, absolutely. Yeah. So what's your... I, I don't know. Like, why? I look so angry in that video. Like, so like, like Mrs. Potato Head, like, I'm going to pack your angry eyes. Let's put those on. Like, taxes make ta- everybody angry. Yeah. Well, math makes me angry. <laughs> Do you know, math. the first time I became cognizant of tax... Mm. was watching an episode of Little House on the Prairie. Of course. And yes. they were talking, the Charles was talking yeah. to Mr. Edwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> forgive me for all of you who don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, but anyway, how could you not? Charles Ingalls at one point in their conversation, they're talking about, I think they're talking about land taxes and they're scoffing and they're, mm-hmm. you know, carrying on. And at one point, Charles says, <laughs> you know what, one day they're going to put a tax on our income. And they both thought that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Well, right and as they did prophetic uh, that video with peggy is posted to youtube our youtube page so go and subscribe and like and share on tv sue online um our youtube page and then go yes. watch them there's a, a bunch of community connections is the category yes and we'll be posting those to our website with articles throughout this week yes okay social media okay shall we and we got a fact old yeah so we had a few more people check in okay. um so merci beaucoup pops in to say good morning ladies with the gratitude hands mm-hmm. um always nice to see you in the morning with a little smiley well thank you merci always nice to get your messages it's always just that little bit surreal for me because you know in my mind i've already formed what you look like so when i do finally meet you <laughs> it's probably going to be like oh okay well yes I'll adjust my image. Okay, but <laughs> nice to get your messages. You're always very kind. Marilyn Trumbull, good morning, everyone. Have a wonderful day uh, with my little favorite kind of closed uh-huh. eye emoji and the kitty and the sun and the temperature, the thermometer, and two cups of coffee. And Judy Varco. Who? Judy Varco? Judy Varco. Good morning, I, Mrs. Judy Varco. Yeah, I don't know. I think that might be a new name for me, although I think I've seen your name somewhere else. I don't think I've seen it in this context. So welcome. welcome. Thank you for watching. Uh, good morning. We've got the smiley. We've got a sun. We've got some lovely hearts. One of them is even kind of sparkling. The scintillation is very nice. nice. Have an awesome, beautiful day yourself as well. I like scintillation. I do. You just like when I say scintillation. I do, I do, I do. I think it's so cute. (laughs) I do. Yes, so cute. Are you done? Oh, factoid me. Factoid. Yeah. June 1st, 1977. Almost born. We're getting there. (laughs) I I still was already born, but again, another story for another day. I'm really trying to fight you off today. I think You can't. I know, uh, you know, age is what it is. Here I am. Oh, I was born and here I am. I'm lying anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Marley and the Whalers, June nice. 1st, 1977. Nice. They played the first of four nights at the Rainbow Theatre in London. There were six nights booked at the Rainbow, but the last two shows were cancelled due to a serious toe injury Marley received oh. in a friendly football game with French journalists just before the tour start in Paris. Subsequently, the tour's second leg in the United States was postponed and then canceled. Okay. Well, no woman, no cry. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> geez, I, I want to be jamming. Yeah. Over him. And, uh, well. No redemption song no for that. No redemption song. <laughs> Not at all. And hey, turn your lights down low, baby. Turn your lights down <laughs> okay. low. All right, we got to the point. Um, so we uh, we do have some more videos coming, interviews coming up 
this week that yes, we you do. schedule. You have some really good ones, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be talking to Pauline's Place. Yes, I am. About their, their fundraiser. I love doing the interviews with them. Yes. I really do. Yes. And uh, they have some really, uh, some really great uh, fundraising mm -hmm. initiatives that are underway uh, in support of their programming. You'll also be, this, I'm, I'm getting her updated because two of these came through last night. I know, like, tell done. me more. No, I hit accept. I know, I know. What I mean. <laughs> so it's you'll also be talking to Jennifer from the FJ Davy Home to talk yes, about the bus. We talked yesterday about the bus. They also have some, like I said to her, like, what other initiatives that you have that are snappy and groovy? She goes, yeah. all of our initiatives are snappy and groovy. I love that attitude. Right? Groovy, so, baby. Um, yeah, so you're going to be talking to her, I think, today, actually. Okay. Well, we yeah. look forward to that. We've been sharing all these. And again, they're all posted to our YouTube page, Community Connection. Yes. I will be posting them in the articles to SueOnline.com. We are very thankful that you're here today. Enjoy your, this very first day of June. And don't forget, we are coming back at 1 o'clock with all your updates. We will have updates on the fire, um, I no doubt. Have a great morning. Taco Tuesday it is. <laughs>